standard chess sets, the Staunton design. This is the style that we use in tournaments and most people consider standard. I'm Rick. AncientChess.com is the website that has all kinds of information about chess, the history of chess, chessmen, and all things involving chess fascination. I'd like to first point you to the Murray's History of Chess, monstrous tome written in 1913, or published, I should say, in 1913. It was written over many years. And he declares back then that most players would prefer to play on this style of chess set. He says it is designed by Howard Staunton. Um, some people still say it was, so there's some controversy about that. This was 1913, and you see the chess set shown here does not have a crown on top of the king. That's an interesting variation. This design was actually um, copyrighted by a fellow named Nathaniel Cook back in 19, I'm sorry, 1849. So here you go, the middle of the 19th century. There's a page, it's, you can see that it's a facsimile from a page that was actually burned in a fire but still survived in the center. There's showing you how the, the pieces actually look on the copyright. And uh, here's a beautiful picture of a famous Staunton set. This set was actually used by Zuckertort in his famous Immortal Game, the game of chess, which has lasted for this long because it's such a wild and crazy game. People just can't get enough of looking at it. One more thing I'd like to show you, the famous uh, book by Garth Williams very clearly displays all sorts of chessmen, and this one is the Staunton design. Now, this set, this design of chessmen is, is preferred by chess players all over the world. It's well known um, since that time, and uh, although I mentioned that Murray said in 1913, most players would prefer this set. It didn't become the official set set down by the International Chess Federation until 1924. Um, so it was pretty popular before then. There was probably a cultural issue there since it was designed by Englishmen, whereas the Chess Federation was a primarily French institution. And in order to become the choice set, it had to eclipse the famous French design, which is called the uh, Regence design for the Café de la Regence. I'm just going to start out by showing you a very simple, inexpensive set, which is made of plastic. Um, I don't actually, don't actually deal in plastic, but I wanted to show you this, these guys. You see, these knights are kind of simplified. They have this sort of strange little snoot. I don't know exactly how that evolved. A lot of chess sets have that kind of look on the knight now. And you probably are familiar with all these forms in general. They're made to be just the most familiar set you could possibly have. This one, uh, I think, is a little nicer than most because it's got a kind of creamy wood tone for the white pieces, whereas these standard tournament plastic sets are usually made of um, just a plain white against a plain black. Um, Let's start out by showing you a very basic wooden set. This is called um, French French Staunton set, although it's it's not one of the finer French sets actually. It's, it's the design is known as French, but this is a very um, kind of blocky set. It's made for getting a lot of play. It's a very handsome set. Feels good. It's felted and weighted and everything. Um, but it's also very durable. You put these guys in the bag and shake it around and nobody's going to get chipped up, which is important for people who play in clubs and play a lot of tournaments, things like that. Okay, so get an idea of this very basic design with these knights that are just kind of chunked out of a block of wood. And let's go up to something much more sophisticated. This is a reproduction of the Spassky Fisher set. That is the set that was played in the World Championship in um, 
1972, and most chess players are familiar, if not fanatical, about that great world-shaking chess event. You notice the knight is all still quite simple and straightforward, but he's got a more sophisticated form. These rooks are interesting. The um, the edges of the turrets kind of taper down there, the way they're cut. The bishop also I find interesting because it's very round, sort of spherical, with a very clear cut into it. And then um, the queen has her fine crown points. The king is also very basic and standard. This is a great set. Really, I prefer this for standard play, for playing in clubs, playing in tournaments, things like that. It's um, generally known as the fischer Spassky or the Reykjavik set. Reykjavik named after the uh, town in Iceland where that championship was played. Um, let's just go a little bit finer. Now, this one, this is um, known as, what do we call this one? The Stallion, the Bold Stallion set. That's because the Stallion has such a fierce, kind of streamlined, very beautifully cleft form. Bold Stallion set. Rooks are very standard. Everything's very standard, but you can see this tendency towards slenderness here. And uh, this is a very handsome set, also excellent for tournament play, but m a little more fine. You wouldn't want to just throw these pieces around in your chess bag. And fierce, you know, that's got a fierce look. You don't want these guys just stomping all over your side of the board and forking their pieces and everything. Um, along those same lines, here's a very nice set. In fact, this is the most popular set that I've handled. A lot of people prefer this set. Very nice wood tone. This is, by the way, shisham wood. It's um, the preferred wood for making wood tone of chess pieces, the, uh, the dark colors I'm talking about here. The, uh, the white pieces are almost always boxwood, and boxwood is an extraordinary wood. It has a very, um, you know, plain name, boxwood. But in fact, it's one of the few woods that's actually so heavy it sinks if you put it in water, even before the pieces are weighted, I'm saying. It's a very hard wood, and it carves to a very fine forms. Boxwood, don't knock it. It's the best. These guys are very handsomely carved. I, I think it's probably because of the knights that this set is so popular. You can see that they're very plainly horse heads. They're neither pushing fierceness nor simplified to a sort of geometric blocky form. They're just very nicely carved, very handsome horse heads. You know what? What more could you want in a chess set, really? You'll notice that the bases of these have a kind of a, a turned up on the edges. Um, the whole thing just sits beautifully on the chessboard and has a beautiful wood tone. So those are the basics. Now let's look at something a little on one far edge. Here is a kind of Russian style or a Slavic style of knight. And this set is known as the Zagreb set. It was made popular back in the 50s, and this is actually when Bobby Fischer made his debut into the international chess scene and did extremely well in an international tournament there for the first time. Zagreb, Yugoslavia. Uh, well, what was Yugoslavia? The, um, the king here has been given a crown. The original, it just has a ball for the crown, as I showed you in Murray's um, book. And then the queen also has the color. The bishops also, very characteristic of the bishops to have the opposite color of um, s sphere on top of their heads there. But as you can see, this set is very, it almost has a toy-like feel with the different colors and the sort of whimsical um, forms of the knights. But um, still, a very serious set and has been played in some of the most serious tournaments uh, in chess history.
beautiful set. Uh, people looking for something special and beautiful and handsome yet standard. Well, that's it. Zagreb chess set. And from there, um, I'd just like to point out a few small sets. Now, I don't sell these because they're very cheap looking, but I wanted to show you for comparison. Here's a small, regular chess set. Um, it was just it was produced in China. Um, China produces some very good things, but um, all these other wooden sets I'm showing you are done, made in India, and uh, that really is um, the country that has a long-standing history of producing the finest chess sets in the world. But I'm showing you this just because it is very simple and basic and small, and many people would just by default fall into using that set. Now the same size of set can also be made a bit more nicely. Here is a very standard set in that size. This is rosewood, by the way. Very nice. You see the knights are basic and clear, much like the, uh, the other French knight that I showed you. But this is a very pleasant set. Rosewood is felted on the bottom, not weighted, but um, this is a, definitely a step up from that, and yet a step, um, maybe two or three steps up from this one even, is this. And um, this is, here you go. This is called the ultimate set. Ultimate because it's just as far as you can go with a fine wooden set. And this, look, look at this, look at this knight here. It's, these guys are tiny. This king is only two and a half inches tall. But look at how finely detailed they are. They're, they're like the finest chessmen you can find, but they just happen to be small, miniature versions. If you like to play on a small set, and you like to play on a good set, this is it. It's called the ultimate set. So, um, that's what I wanted to show you in terms of chessmen. Um, I'll close with our most standard, basic, the Reykjavik set. Once again, this is ancientchess.com. Please feel free to go onto this website and browse chess sets. Look at my um, pages of world chess history. You'll see that chess has taken many forms over the centuries. I've got many more videos on YouTube for you to watch. And um, I thank you for your time and your interest in great chess sets.